Chapter 5 The Five Ages of Man Some deny that Prometheus created men, or that any man sprang from a serpent's teeth. They say that Earth bore them spontaneously, as the best of her fruits, especially in the soil of Attica, and that Alalcomenius was the first man to appear, by Lake Capias in Boeotia, before even the moon was. He acted as Zeus's counsellor on the occasion of his quarrel with Hera, and as tutor to Athene while she was still a girl. These men were the so-called golden race, subjects of Cronus, who lived without cares or labour, eating only acorns, wild fruit, and honey that dripped from the trees, drinking the milk of sheep and goats, never growing old, dancing and laughing much. Death to them was no more terrible than sleep. They are all gone now, but their spirits survive as genii of happy music retreats, givers of good fortune, and upholders of justice. Next came a silver race, eaters of bread, likewise divinely created. The men were utterly subject to their mothers, and dared not disobey them, although they might live to be a hundred years old. They were quarrelsome and ignorant, and never sacrificed to the gods, but at least did not make war on one another. Zeus destroyed them all. Next came a brazen race, who fell like fruits from the ash trees, and were armed with brazen weapons. They ate flesh as well as bread, and were delighted in war, being insolent and pitiless men. Black death has seized them all. The fourth race of man was brazen too, but nobler and more generous, being begotten by the gods on mortal mothers. They fought gloriously in the siege of Thebes, the expedition of the Argonauts, and the Trojan War. These became heroes, and dwell in the Elysian fields. The fifth race is the present race of iron, unworthy descendants of the fourth. They are degenerate, cruel, unjust, malicious, libidinous, unfilial, treacherous.